So uh, we'll start with uh, our founders. We'll continue with OSCP team, and then we will ask all the members to introduce themselves in one minute uh, and say who they are, what they do, uh, and hopefully, if we have more time, uh, we <coughs> will go with explaining more some of the project uh, on on things which take more than one minute to introduce yourself. Hopefully, if we are smart, we should be able to make a, a, a two round uh, with one introducing yourself, another one speaking about what are your goals and objective. So, with that said, welcome to everyone. And I will ask uh, the uh, founder and chairman of the organization, Dr. Lebovitz, who is in Pittsburgh, to introduce himself. Uh, it's still it's early afternoon for me, but I think for most of you it's evening, so good evening to everyone. Um, my name is Robert Lebovitz. I am, as, Dr. as Dr. Meyer said, I am a psychologist based in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I have been in practice, private practice for over 35 years. Um, Dr. Meyer and I started our collaboration over a dozen years ago, and in the process we've developed um, mind-focused coaching, and now we initiated the mental, the, the mental Wellness Society, and we're hoping that it will grow and become something that has tremendous impact everywhere. Um, I, as I mentioned, I've been in private practice for most of my life. I've also spent about 20-something years in academia. I uh, was faculty at the University of Pittsburgh, training graduate students in clinical psychology. And um, this is an amazing venture. We started a few months ago, and it's just been extraordinary to see the participation and to see the people, who, their skill sets and just their activities. And I'm sure we will do amazing things in the, in the future. So I welcome everyone and I thank everyone for participating and joining this, this society. Thank you so much. Thank you. So now I will ask, uh, uh, will ask Tori, who is in South Carolina, to introduce himself on the OSCP group. Hello, everyone, and it's, it's great to see all your lovely faces here. Um, a little bit about myself. I have a 11 years of field experience in human resources and industrial organizational psychology. I'm actually currently working on my dissertation in IO, focusing on motivation and digital well-being applications, and then how that can be applied to the workforce. I have a huge passion for well-being, especially for um, employer um, well-being workforce programs. Um, recently, a little bit more, I led my employer to best-in-class um, employer wellness program in 2020 for the state of South Carolina. We saved them about 500K in medical and for diabetes. Uh, so those are a few things that I've, I've done and am a part of. Um, also, I'm the lead of the organizational culture strategy and performance team. I have my wonderful teammate, I think he's on the call, I, I can't see everybody, uh, Simi, uh, Dr. Simi Adams, he's here. Um, but to share more about the organizational culture strategy and performance team and what we are here to do is we assist the CEO with facilitating the mission, the vision, and the goals set by the Mental Wellness Society's board of founders. And we also seek to develop actionable strategies uh, that engage you all, the membership, in an inclusive manner. And one thing we've done so far to engage you all is actually uh, send a welcome packet to you all, which contains five items uh, that you can engage with that provides the foundational pieces of why the Mental Wellness Society exists and which is due to the mind-focused coaching uh, methodology. But uh, after you engage with that welcome packet, we would love for you to complete a survey um, that should come to you. That survey takes about one minute and you can provide feedback on the packet. Um, so just tell us, you know, was that valuable to you? Was it not? What worked? What did you understand? What did you not understand about the packet? Um, and just allows you to tell us how you can engage with that material going forward. But your feedback helps us be able to improve the information that we could send to future members who join um, the society. And before Simi speaks, um, some brief comments about how the Mental Wellness Society and Mindful 
um, focused coaches, coaching has assisted me. Um, the methodology uh, is already intrinsic within me. So there's that synergy already exists. Um, and I incorporate that a lot when I am consulting with clients. Um, and I've had an overwhelmingly positive response um, when I've incorporated the MFC methodology in my consulting um, because the individuals are truly starting to understand what their intended destination is and they're moving quickly and more efficient in an effective manner toward accomplishing the goals that they want out of their work with an individual for themselves. Um, but without taking up any more time, I get the mic to Simi, Dr. Simi Adams. Um, so if you would go ahead and explain a little more about the organizational culture strategy and performance team. Yeah, certainly. Thank you, Tori. And so it's a, it's a real pleasure to, again, this is our second iteration of this, the world meetings. It, it's such a uh, fascinating how we have almost completely encompassed, in, incorpor incorporated or encompassed the whole world uh, in essence, not in every country yet, but uh, we are growing. Uh, a little bit about myself, as Tori implied, I have my doctoral degree is in psychology, focused on industrial organizational psychology, and um, I'm retired Army. And I find that the this concept of mental wellness is very much aligned to what I describe as unleashing the tiger. And this is for organizational individual high performance. So uh, having mental wellness and incorporating the concepts contained within it is very much aligned to what I do as a senior executive coach and as an organizational psychologist moving forward. In regards to this team, uh, as Tori implied, we, we have a team to help support this team and the founders. And part of what we've done, and will, which will be incorporated here shortly, is to develop um, a series of total of five cohort groups. The concept is that you'll be placed in one that aligns, that best aligns to what you provided, uh, Gerard, to as what you do. Um, but we would like to invite you to join other cohort groups. And the whole point of that is to um, collect people into uh, a mechanism through which they are aligned with other like professions, disciplines, if you will. And what will come out here shortly, the five groups just a um, precursor of things to come uh, will be one is uh, just personnel interested in wellness in general. And then we'll have the health and wellness professionals. We'll have human resources, which, which includes the IO psychologists, non-governmental uh, organizations, the professionals um, in the mental wellness area. We'll have science, academia, research and technology, and then special education type professionals. And then we'll have the psychologists, the life coaching, the social worker, the therapist professionals out there. So because you'll be grouped in with people that are of like mind, like disciplines, the goal is to encourage the collaboration amongst everyone in that team. And it does not um, preclude you from being a member of any or all of the other uh, groups, cohorts, if you will. Like for instance, I'm a senior executive coach, but I'm also an IO psychologist. So I myself will join um, the one dealing with IO and I will also be joining the life coaching uh, cohort uh, group also. And so when we push this out, um, if it ha I think it's actually gone out as an email already, y'all may already know about it, um, but we put down certain uh, just disciplines in general that helps define what each cohort is all about. And so without further ado, I'll hand this back over to Gerard. Oh, and let me talk about you a little bit about how this has been so prevalent with me in my practice. I, I implied about the Unleashing the Tiger, but everything that I focus on as an organizational psychologist and as well as, as, well as an individual senior detective coach, um, if one has mental wellness, then they are able to more clearly uh, move forward and achieve their goals. So that's that's why it's so much uh, aligns to what I do. So without further ado, I'd like to hand it back over to Gerard uh, as we continue on. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think we uh, will start by somebody who is not in the same time uh, frame than all of you, with Rosha. Daria, can you speak about yourself? Uh, yeah. <laughs> 
sorry. Uh, hi everyone. My name is Daria. Um, uh, I'm based in Moscow, Russia. Uh, right now, I'm uh, working at the retail industry uh, on digital transformation, but um, I'm also very interested in uh, mental wellness uh, because, well, uh, keeping teams happy is my uh, job. <laughs> yeah, so that's why I'm here. Hi, everyone. Thank you. I think we have somebody from Italy, uh, uh, which is Annunziata. Uh, we have to, you, because you are many, we have two screens, so I need to go from one screen to the other. Okay, Anuziata, you want to say hello to everybody? Hello, I come from Italy. Uh, I'm glad to stay here and share the Mental Wellness Society's purpose with you today. I'm a psychologist, uh, and uh, this year I founded the Mindful Feeling Academy, my personal film with a with other person uh, and with my team, um, uh, we use a an holistic and science-based approach, combining training, consulting, coaching, and diagnostics to design and conduct our personal development, management, and, um, and organizational path. Um, based on the assumption of neuroscience, psychophysiology, uh, and the psychology of emotion. Very uh, good. Great. Uh, so. I see, um, my background is uh, um, very, um, the, the purpose of um, mental wellness is uh, very interesting for uh, for, uh, for us, for develop other collaboration or research. Okay, thank you. So I, I will have to mention that Anunciata, uh, who is in Italy, uh, speaks fluently Spanish because she lived in, in Madrid yes. and she's part of the uh, Spanish group of uh, Coti who cannot be with us because yeah. she has to go out of town to make a TV show. So, uh, speaking with a foreign country, I think we have Jacqueline Jacques from Switzerland. We cannot hear you. Okay. No, it's good, uh, good evening, everybody. I am currently in India. Uh, so, I decided I could not join the meeting for uh, the Europeans. So, I decided to join, you know, at least I, I would. Uh, I am a Canadian. So, I felt I was also part of your group. And then, so I am quite new. Uh, I have known uh, Dr. Mayer for uh, some time now. He asked me to join, uh, you know, invited me to join, you know, this group. It's just wonderful. So I am, um, uh, I am a quantum energy medicine practitioner, coach, and trainer. Uh, I have been a management consultant, a change management, and um, a manager uh, in some uh, corporate world. And then uh, in 1994, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. So you know what it is when you talk about mental wellness. Um, so this was mainly like, I would say, a burnout, if I can say. Uh, so, and then uh, I discovered the quantum technologies, and this gave me a second life. So I am now a quantum, uh, uh, quantum energy medicine, quantum biofeedback uh, practitioner and coach, trainer, and uh, working mainly uh, to prevent and reduce stress. And we know how mental stress is uh, important, physical, mental, emotional. So this is my, uh, my uh, I would say my, uh, my main concern. And right now I am working uh, as a founder member of the European Foundation of the Complementary and Alternative Medicine in Belgium with a group of doctors so to work with, uh, you know, uh, all with alternative medicine. I totally believe that this is what is the future, you know. So thank you for, uh, thank I, I you. think it is just exciting. Thank you, Dr. Mayer. So now I will ask Annabelle. Uh, Annabelle is in uh, uh, Kenya to speak about her organization which is fascinating. Annabelle, are you with us? Annabelle? Okay. Annabelle has an organization in Africa where she's uh, working to change, to give 
a better future for Africa, and she has developed a, a, a foundation where she's empowering uh, young girls, uh, and she gives them the power of choice, decision on how to deal with many social issues, and that's her way to change the future of Africa. So she will come later. Uh, speaking about uh, uh, far away, we have Dr. Wallach in Israel. Joe, Zef, tell us about it. Hi, everybody. I'm a clinical psychologist. Uh, though I'm here in Israel, I actually, uh, you can probably tell from my, my accent that I'm actually originally from the United States. I grew up in New York. I completed my doctorate in uh, Chicago in clinical psychology, and I stayed practicing there until 2016 when I relocated with my family here to Israel. Uh, and I have a uh, practice here, primarily independent, uh, working with one of the health insurance uh, companies, but also uh, individually as well. And uh, Dr. Meyer and I uh, met um, online two years ago, I think, maybe a little bit more. Uh, we started talking about biofeedback and how we could, three years ago, um, and uh, how we can incorporate maybe biofeedback into MFC to see if we could um, utilize the tools to show people how they can change their, physiolo their physiological responses to stress and to slow down the response from fight or flight or tunnel vision and being able to slow down and back out of the tunnel vision um, and learning to identify things earlier on. Um, and it's a very good fit already for my approach, uh, both from the cognitive therapy and the Nigerian uh, approach and the Nigerian approach to therapy. It felt very a very good fit uh, for me. Um, clinically, my, my approach is also grounded um, in a bio psychophysiological approach, so really trying to look at the whole person and also addressing aspects of uh, spirit and choice. Uh, so the coaching and the approach from MFC is a natural fit for me uh, in my approach as a therapist as well. Um, and I've had the pleasure of working and collaborating with Dr. Meyer over the past few years. We even spoke and gave a lecture also with Dr. Lukovitz and uh, at Aviv University a few years ago, or a year and a half ago. And I look forward to doing more of those as well. And we are exploring together different new system of neurofeedback for children at risk. Uh, that uh, program which is in Israel that uh, we are looking how to incorporate it with what we do. I will ask uh, Alvaro Bonilla, who is in uh, Colombia, to speak also. Um, hello, my name is Alvaro Bonilla. I'm uh, actually, I'm not a psychologist, I'm a lawyer. I focus on uh, psychologist malpractice. <laughs> no, so if you're stressed, you can always contact me, no? I'm just, I'm just kidding. I I know Gerald from a time and I'm happy to help him in Colombia to develop the network. I'm also helping in the Spanish speaking group with Coti and we are planning to launch a um, podcast in Spanish and we, we're working on many different projects. Thank you, Alvaro. I will have now, this is, uh, I, I don't want to mispronounce your name. Shwana Benson. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Shwana Benson. I'm a psychologist, clinical psychologist in Minneapolis, Minnesota, in the States. Um, and I'm, I'm now in private practice, but I've usually worked in clinics and hospitals for most of my 20 years. Uh, and I am just working on helping wellness still one person at a time in practice. <laughs> Uh, so I mostly do uh, psychotherapy with adults, as well as um, some psychological assessments. Thank you. Darcy, New York. Um, actually, I'm in Morristown, New Jersey. Um, I, uh, I have a, a very uh, rich background. I am a PTSD uh, national therapist. Uh, I'm also a behavior analyst. And most of... Um, most of the methodologies that people use come from ABA, Applied Behavior Analysis. Um, so that is my background, um, su such as ACT or uh, CBT, all those areas have come from uh, Applied Behavior Analysis. They're just repackaged in how, you know, they're named. But it's the same methodology. So 
I work with people with disabilities um, from young children, from three years old all the way until uh, the end. I'm also a um, neurofeedback specialist. Um, so I use my neurofeedback to gather data on the brain, how the brain, so, you know, the baseline before I do treatment. I do my interventions. I'm also a hypnotherapist. So everything's all combined, depends on the person, what their um, needs are. And then I provide the therapy. And then I also uh, do the uh, post um, neurofeedback assessment, which demonstrates that basically with the methodology that I use, um, the levels of anxiety, depression, um, really reduce and their, um, you know, the brain becomes more optimal in functioning. So it's pretty interesting, but I also, you know, I give them therapy with the neurofeedback uh, equipment that I have. Um, so I, along the lines of a ABA, I am actually uh, a trainer in schools and corporations because part of that is also organizational behavior management, which is part of ABA. Um, so I'm, I'm uh, actually just the person that uh, helps people change their behavior and no matter where they are. Okay, thank you very much. Thank Annabelle, you. can you hear us? Can you speak about your project in Kenya? One minute. All right, thank you very much. Um, good evening to us all. My name is Annabelle. Um, my foundation is called Transform Generation Africa in Kenya and uh, in partnership with um, Hannes Parenting Power. Through the organization, um, we advocate for mental wellness in my country where mental health is not, is yet to, it's in the growth stage. So we are, we, we are working with the government to be able to enhance mental wellness programs in schools and in our government institutions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, one word only. You told me that your project is to help Africa to get a better future through young girls. Can you say one, one short word about it? Yeah, thank you. Um, my initiative is to, uh, is to change Africa through Kenya is in Africa. And um, in Africa, we have a challenge with girl child mentorship, whereby we focus more on, we are focusing more on um, the boy child to be able to empower the boy child to take up leadership tasks, whereby we're leaving out the girl child. So my initiative is to create and to equip the girl child to be able to create the leader within to be able to lead the country and the world without through the innate transformation. Thank you. Okay. So uh, we'll uh, go, go with Justina. Hi, Justina. Hi. Uh, I'm Justina, but uh, because I'm originally from from Poland, my proper name I will say that it's Justina. But uh, I'm, I'm used to that. I'm used to the fact that usually everyone is calling me Justina, Justina. So, so that's a little about about me where I'm from. Uh, what I'm doing? I'm actually I'm a business mentor because of my background. My background is in two things. One is math which leads me to basically mentoring people on sales and marketing strategies. And the other, because I was for more than 16 years fitness instructor, then I'm always focusing on the health. And actually what became my passion, always looking for the performance, how health and mental actually wellness influence the performance in business. So I'm always doing two things, one on one, and I'm mentoring people on a very hard skills but without the mental wellness, they cannot perform the way they would like. So I'm always incorporating two of them. And currently what I'm, uh, what I'm actually preparing finally to do, the idea I started one year uh, ago, the less stress project dedicated for business people to help them to perform better. Any, any personal testimonial about how mindful choice works for yourself? Yes, I uh, for, for sure. I, I was the receiver of the mindful 
coaching from Abraham Gerard, and I need to say that that changed a lot in my life, and especially the part I wasn't aware with the impulsivity. I had a, react, a tendency to react too impulse with too high impulsivity for certain things, and that didn't have actually good results. But since I started actually using the mindful tools, it helped me really with, uh, with that part, with impulsivity and being very clear about my choices. I still remember always red doors, green doors, and that's the question I'm always asking myself every single day. So Thank you. I recommend everyone really using this tool. Tell me, if it, tell me if it's Patrick from Nashville, Tennessee. Yes, thank you. I'm Tammy Fitzpatrick. I'm an industrial organizational psychologist. I've worked in the areas of uh, industries of finance, aerospace, and I'm currently I have a full-time job uh, working in healthcare. My position is a director of culture and engagement uh, within an organizational corporate environment. I've also spent more than two decades in academia, primarily with graduate students teaching uh, IO psychology areas. So. Uh, currently teaching leadership, strategy, and development, team building, collaboration, and working in those specific areas, developing students. Thank you. Laurence Desmarie, California. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm actually in Washington State, but it's pretty I'm close. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's very close. Um, I'm a coach. And as well as a chef, and I work with uh, women to improve their lifestyle using mainly foods, but uh, to improve their mental and physical health, basically. And I'd like to incorporate some of your tools in the way I coach people. So, Good. and you are also in natural food cooking. Yes. Okay. healthy plant base. <laughs> okay, very good. Chantal Martinez. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Chantal and I'm a doctoral candidate at Florida International University's uh, Industrial Organizational Psychology Program. And currently my research, I'm looking at the effects of COVID-19 on uh, marginalized individuals. Specifically, I'm looking at Latinx, uh, ages 18 to 29, and just in general, I have. Oh, and I'm looking at how it affects their uh, psychological well being and their physical health. So, levels of anxiety, depression, and I'm really excited to share my research with you guys. And also, as I'm just starting out in my career, uh, it's so awesome to hear what you guys are doing and, uh, you know, see some future routes that I can take where I can incorporate my IO training and also uh, be in the mental wellness space. So I'm really excited to be here and um, happy to meet all you guys. And you give me a good uh, segue to announce that something you are interested with, we are organizing a conference, a world conference in Tel Aviv in uh, February 2021 about uh, mental wellness for uh, mental health professional um, for social workers, educators uh, after COVID because it has totally disrupted a lot uh, uh, of uh, our life and it has left some st stigma uh, and we are working on it. So the same conference will be also in the same different conference session, but we organize also a conference for the same uh, people, but this time in Cuba, Havana, and it will be December 2021. So uh, that's something I wanted to announce. So Monica Borchel. Hi, um, I'm a clinical psychologist in Hong Kong, but I live in California. So I've been trying to find where I fit in here. Um, I specialize in attachment, trauma, and loss. So that would go with the biofeedback, right? Our attachment system is very much our nervous system. And so now I'm in the US since November, I see a lot of trauma happening with the guns. And so I, I'm, I'm thinking, how can we all advocate for these mental health things, right? And so. This is great. We have this international community advocating for these things. So I'm happy to be a part of the group. And, and you are practicing in, in Chinese in Hong Kong also? 
English. English. Most people, most people oh. in Hong Kong can speak English. Expat. So you are dealing with expat. No, and a lot of locals because it was ah, a British okay. for a hundred years, okay. right? So they speak English. Yeah. Okay, Zelv Alpern in uh, Washington D.C. or around the Washington D.C. Hi, everybody from um, confusing Washington D.C. <clears throat> I'm sure you see us in the news all the time. I've lived here all my life. Um, I'm, I've been practicing psychotherapy for 30 years. Uh, recently, on COVID, I pivoted uh, and um, more into um, relationship coaching. Um, I used to be a director of a large drug rehab. Um, I started my own employee assistance program where I worked with labor management and created programs, uh, mental health programs um, for particular unions on the East Coast. Um, but mostly um, right before COVID, I was doing couples retreats and really enjoying it. And, you know, COVID kind of kiboshed that. So I got back into um, relationship coaching and really um, dealing with the um, reality of COVID and what it's done to couples and relationships. Um, I'm not sure we've begun to hear um, the horrors that, that, that uh, we might be hearing about, but I, I feel fortunate um, to be able to work with um, couples who are trying to keep it together during this time. And um, I have a TV show and a podcast here in Washington. And um, I'm really happy to be part of this group. Um, Abraham um, um, recruited me, grabbed me right off of LinkedIn. And um, I feel fortunate to do that. I also want to just say hi to Justin Stinson, who I happen to know very well. And um, glad he's here as well. And thank you all. And I look forward to working um, some of the groups. So thank thanks. you, Rinda, Rinda Montgomery. Hi, thank you for welcoming me. I uh, 9.38 in Oregon, Western US. It's nice to meet you all. I am a veteran teacher, uh, administrator, and a higher ed assistant or adjunct professor. Um, my primary work now, I am co-founder and uh, chief academic officer for Paradigm Learning Systems. And our focus is uh, learning solutions architecture. We create learning experiences which integrate disciplines and we always integrate social emotional learning, um, mental wellness, uh, executive functioning skills, uh, trauma-informed learning into our disciplines as well as have it as uh, side classes for teachers and students. And so we have programs in transitioning students, we have programs K-12, we have programs for transitioning adults through various stages of life, and we have teacher programs. Thank you. Thank you very much. Scott Donkin, my good friend Scott. Hi, Gerard. Thank you for having me here. Um, my name is Scott Donkin. I'm a chiropractor in Lincoln, Nebraska. I also have a specialty in occupational safety and health. I was fortunate enough to have met uh, Dr. Meyer a, a quarter century ago when he was uh, pioneering the research at uh, Carnegie Mellon University's Driver Training Safety Institute. So I got to help him in that regard, and we learned many things under his leadership. And I'm very, very excited that he has uh, shifted from the research that we did and expanded it into the Mental Wellness Society. Um, I've been a chiropractor in Lincoln for 40 years. I love being in the trenches, treating patients, and then also treating companies and employers um, like an organism, because they're in their own unique organisms that have similarities to the human body and mind. And so I'm looking forward to applying the concepts of mental health and, and wellness to the Mental Wellness Society with employers and with my own patient base. I'm, I've been working with the uh, Evo cards in my practice, and I found them, I'm finding many ways to use them in a practice, and I hope other practitioners will be able to use that too. For example, if a person has chronic pain, and uh, they come in with an acute, ep acute episode, they only want to get over the acute episode, but then they're faced with the idea that maybe they can get through the chronic pain too and get to a different level of wellness. One of the cards that I found to be very helpful with that was the, the fear and anxiety cards. So I show them the fear card that has a shark in the water, and then the anxiety card that doesn't have the shark in the water. I say, what, and they go, well, what if the pain comes back? And I go, well, what if the pain comes back? You have ways to handle and deal with it. So I believe that this is a way to help people shift their mindset 
within the practitioner's busy setting um, and apparently chaotic, you know, daily activities to have an organized system to help the patients even more and also to apply that to uh, employers. Thank you, Scott. Jerry Asowski in Muncie, New York. Hi, I'm Gelly. Um, I'm a child and family therapist now for 20 years. I'm a registered play therapy supervisor. I'm an EMDR consultant. And uh, while I love what I do in person in my office, COVID also created uh, a huge shift for me. I uh, had a near death experience with COVID last year. And during my very, very long recuperation, wrote out uh, a parenting course, which is uh, aligned with uh, mental wellness and the Mental Wellness Society. Um, and uh, my goal right now, in addition to my work in my office, is to make a difference for every mom in the world and every child so that I disrupt the place where we talk about parents, like fix the kids, fix their behavior, and instead talk about mental wellness, about connection, about nurture, um, and give parents tools so that every child in this world has a safe, loving home. So that's about me and hopefully launching online under Parenting with Gelly and uh, looking forward to connect with all of you. Thank you. I see that we have Justin Stinson, but I don't see him on the different, uh, on, the, on the screen. So is Justin Stinson with us? Because yep, I see... I'm we don't yep, see I'm you. Here. We don't see you. Oh, that's so weird. Okay, so you can talk. Okay. Anyway. Yep. Um, uh, yeah. So, uh, Justin Stinson, I am in Dubuque, Iowa, and uh, I'm an executive leadership and entrepreneurial startup coach. And uh, my background is really in photography and business, and I use that photography to uh, attack business from a very different perspective. And I work with clients to look at uh, things from a diff very different angle and look very much bigger than uh, what they had originally thought. And so um, sometimes that big perspective can, can take a very different angle in identifying new revenue for their business, finding new balance in their life, uh, both uh, personally and professionally and uh, even create more happiness within their jobs. And so I'm excited to be part of this Mental Wellness Society. Um, I think it's going to be extremely beneficial, and I really look forward to it. Thank you. What about Rebecca Davinson on the lovely storytelling? Yes, so I'm a former assistant professor of English. My background is in British and American literature. I left off teaching a while back, and... Um, went into writing. I'm an author, a published author, and I also took up a meditation practice many years ago and have been a long time uh, practitioner. I began developing a tool for young people to help them reimagine themselves as resilient, gritty, empowered journeyers if they were um, suffering from self stories of shame or doubt or anxiety. Um, Beta tested the practice with a group of young people at the state mental hospital down in Provo, Utah. And it was interesting working with them for a year to discover the way that um, learning to sit and acquiring a tool for dialing into their imaginations helped them sort of reimagine themselves as different kinds of people. If they felt disempowered, and of course all of them had been um, abused in some way, so they were looking for ways to connect with their power and to manage their behavior a little more strategically, but reimagining themselves as journeyers um, who were strong and empowered, felt real enough that I decided to um, develop what I had taught them into recorded journeys. So my tool is called Lotomus. It's a web app, and um, on that app, you can listen to journeys that cast you as a journey or avatar and invite you to go into a meditative experience that also allows for restful alertness and sort of a, just a recasting of yourself. Thank you. Uh, I see that uh, Dr. Jerry Leisman is uh, now with us. So he's one of our founders and he's the head of uh, everything which has to do with research, science, technology. He's also the co-publisher uh, of our Mental Wellness Society 
scientific journal called the Mental Coma Societal and, and Global Wellness. Jerry. First of all, let me apologize for turning up late, but um, you'll, I'll tell you what my, my excuse is. It's a very good excuse. A good excuse. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what my excuse is. So let me introduce myself very quickly. <laughs> uh, for those of you who are new to this, uh, my name is Jerry Wiesman. Um, I was uh, trained 45 years ago uh, as a pediatric neurologist. My first degree, apparently got, someone got interested in this this morning. My first degree has nothing to do with that. It's actually in music. So maybe there's some relationship between that. Uh, the pediatric neurology thing didn't really work out for me. Um, so I decided to do a PhD after that. It took me about seven, eight years in um, biomedical engineering and cognitive neuroscience. So I actually sit in the behavioral, cognitive thinking, memory um, issues of life developmentally with child development. But that also gets to include parents and things like that. And the biomedical engineering piece is how to engineer solutions for um, developmental problems. My connection with wellness or mental wellness is an emphasis on wellness, which is um, prevent all of these things from happening by leading. So my interest is in the optimization of human function. And without getting into why you can save that by turning up to one of the things I was dealing with this evening, we have two conferences planned for the mental wellness group. One of which is planned in February at the, uh, here in Israel in the um, University of Tel Aviv, Tel Aviv University. You guys are cordially invited. Please do submit abstracts when we get the website designed and up and running. And the second is planned for December 2022 in the Western Hemisphere in Havana, Cuba. And that's where I was just now, uh, dealing with the Cubans. And um, we had time commitments that prevented me from turning up to the first part of this meeting. And that's why I apologize for turning up late. But the result is we're running this conference in December, uh, all being well, uh, December 2022, in a really, really great place because I'm there uh, about three, four months a year. I have a dual appointment at the University of Haifa here in Israel and also at the University of Medical Sciences in Havana. So the cast of characters are well known to me and I suggest that you turn up because it will be a gloriously wonderful meeting. That having been said, um, we are also planning um, uh, a journal uh, and that journal will be published by Nova Scientific Publishers. Uh, we probably um, the launch of that journal will likely be sometime oh at the beginning of 2022, and the journal will in include scientific-based studies uh, on the topic of wellness cross in a cross-disciplinary fashion. You've already heard that we represent the bodywork people, uh, the coaching people, the life. Um, uh, industrial organizational psychology uh, world, uh, psychology, health, mental health, and just about everything else. So this journal will be interdisciplinary in nature, and our function is to create a knowledge base for us to use. One of the things that ties all of us together is the fact that Despite degreed, non-degreed, and this and the other thing, there's no common language between us. And so what we're trying to do, uh, in fact, no, we're not trying. It's like trying to pick up a telephone. You can't, you either do or you don't. So in our particular case, we are creating a common language whereby we can discuss and create change on the basis of evidence that we are producing and publishing in our own journal. And we will only also include newsy type articles, editorials, uh, information about conferences, things that we might share, letters to the editor. So we're going to have an archival database, knowledge base for creating the discipline of mental wellness, which by the way, does not exist as a discipline. What does exist as a discipline is mental health, but not wellness. And even in the United States, an association for mental wellness has nothing to do with mental wellness. It has something to do with mental health. 
So we're creating a society whose knowledge base is about making change by optimizing human performance in normal individuals. It's not a healthcare profession. Uh, and we will support this with seminars and webinars and journals and meetings. And I would like to personally, as one of the founding members, welcome each of you. And once again, I apologize for turning up late. I don't do things like that, but I just did. So, okay. thank you for your ears. Thank you, Jerry. Subri King, can you hear us? Yes, sir, I can hear you all. Okay, we don't see you. I'm sorry, I'm currently at work trying to multitask. <laughs> okay, can you speak and introduce yourself in one minute? Yes, sir. Um, so my name is Sabri King. I am currently a recruiter at um, Eau Claire Cooperative Health, which is um, a stream of healthcare practices. Um, we have different specialties. Um, and I'm currently in school for my doctorate in industrial and organizational psychology. I'm an Air Force veteran. Um, I also volunteer. I'm very active um, in my community. And um, thank you for having me here today. Thank you so much. So I will ask Tiffany Castagno. No. Hello, everyone. I am Tiffany Castagno, and I am located in Pittsburgh, Happy Pennsylvania. Birthday. Happy birthday, uh, th Thank you. <laughs> yes, yesterday was my birthday, and I think my allergies are flared because we hung out on our patio, which was delightful, but I'm paying for it, apparently. Um, so I am excited to be here today. I'm an HR consultant here in Pittsburgh. I'm originally from Milwaukee. We relocated out here a few years ago uh, for my husband to take a job with FedEx ground uh, headquartered out here. So I partner with small to medium organizations to really help them build their infrastructures, their teams and cultures. I'm very passionate about leadership, culture, uh, organizations where people want to stay because having been on the other side of that, um, it, it, some workplaces are very toxic and I don't want that for other people. So it's a large, large part of my why. Having been through a uh, major depression myself that was work induced, um, don't want that for other people. And so my goal really is to build cultures where people want to stay, where they're not ruined from their employee experience. And I'm a huge advocate um, from my own personal uh, life and experience of mental health, um, as well as my mom has uh, some conditions. So um, I'm really excited that um, Gerard reached out on LinkedIn and that I could be here today. So and, and, you, and you need to meet soon with Dr. Lebovitz in Pittsburgh. Yes, okay. <laughs> I look forward to it. Jet Schneider. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Dr. Meyer. My name is Jay Schneider. I am a... <laughs> Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you if Mr. Machado is closing the, the microphone. Got yes, I'm here. I'm here. Thank you. I, I was in a meeting with Jerry Lisman. That's why we, de we were delayed. Yeah, but I will ask you to cut your microphone and Jay will be able to speak. <laughs> Hello. Uh, do you hear me? Yes, we hear you. Yes. Jay, continue. Anyway, hello everyone. My name is Jay Schneider. I'm in Austin, Texas. And uh, thank you, Dr. Meyer, for for uh, all that you're doing here. Uh, I am a drug and alcohol interventionist. I also work with uh, dual diagnosed clients. Uh, uh, I started Bridge to Shore Interventions back in 2015. I was a behavioral health counselor for nine years from 2000 to 2009. Um, so I travel all over the U.S. and internationally, uh, helping clients break free from the cycle of addiction so that they can eventually find mental wellness and find purpose in their life. Thank you. Thank I will you. ask Dr. Machado to speak. Uh, Calixo, you have one minute to introduce yourself. Well, um, I am a professor and researcher of neurology in Havana, Cuba. I work at the Institute of Neurology and Neurosurgery. I have a long experience organizing congresses and meetings. I have several topics like uh, brain death and end of life dilemmas. That's why I am close related to wellness of life and, and also other topics on 
clinically or officially. And I would love to to welcome you all in Havana for a wellness congress. I will be I will, I will be really very happy. Okay, thank you so much. So, with that said, Ellen Bradley. Hi everyone, I just want to say I'm so excited to be here, very honored, and listening to all of your backgrounds and intentions, it truly gives me hope for our very broken world, and I think that's like the most important thing I want to share. So with that, I am an outlier, I have so many passions, a consummate student of personal development, I'm an actress, I'm an artist, an athlete, speaker, leadership coach, but where my relevance is to this particular group is in 2004, I um, was hospitalized with my young son who was two years old. Um, on a journey where he would be fighting for his life every day for the next four years with an autoimmune disease called aplastic anemia. And that was when I really learned the importance of mental well-being as the foundation to um, living your best life. And I partnered with a company that I helped develop over the last 20 years, which is now a $7 billion company dedicated to the art of well-being. And what I'm most excited about is continuing to provide solutions in the nutritional realm that help people balance brain chemistry by making the right choices, utilizing some of our packages with their own food choices, learning the importance of nutrition as it relates to well-being. But we also offer many other tools relative to exercise and community um, <clears throat> and connectivity that facilitates all aspects of well-being. So I work with people for free that I mentor that join the team that are looking for solutions or looking for new careers um, who would like to promote this aspect of, of what we're doing. So I'm very happy to be here and I look forward to getting to know all of you. Lisa, Lisa with a wonderful interviewer. You made a great podcast with me. Okay, well, thank Lisa. you, um, Dr. Gerard, um, for being a part of my podcast. I just launched it four months ago, uh, executive wellness coach, best-selling author of a weight loss book that as someone who's struggled with my own mental health through this whole lockdown of anxiety and ADD, I really like to bring to my coaching a level of spirituality and mental health and wellness. And I feel that this is such an honor to be part of this team. I typically help people with weight loss and fitness, but I feel like as a part of a, being a wellness coach, if you don't uh, approach the mental wellness aspect of things, you're never going to be a whole person. So I love everything you guys are doing. I'm honored to collaborate and do more projects together. Thank you. So we will go with quickly Jonathan Palmieri and then we'll close with Dr. Calixo. Go on. Thank you for having me on here. I'm, uh, I fit more into the HR camp of things, though I have an undergraduate degree in psychology and plan on pursuing a master's level degree uh, shortly. I'm an entrepreneur. I have a uh, recruiting business where I do consulting, coaching, and um, hourly type of uh, recruitment services. Um, on top of that, I've developed and continue working on technology to improve the way that we find our jobs and the way we work in them spend most of the time we're awake working we might as well enjoy it and find ways to be the best possible people we can be and not have that negatively impact our home lives and it's kind of where i fit into the mental wellness society thank you so i will ask now uh juan carlos otiker to say a few words juan carlos can you hear us dr otiker can you hear us no okay so I think everybody spoke. Did I forget anybody? Because I was going on two screen. Ah, uh, maybe I'm mute. Uh, ask me. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, so I think, uh, did I forget anybody? Did everybody was able to speak? Yeah, okay. So. Uh, we are having uh, one meeting like we have here per month. Uh, we are doing three groups because of the time zone. But we see that we cannot go in depth in sharing, for example, our tools. Our uh, tools and our uh, uh, main expert system to help people to make better decision making 
on change on choice. So we decided to make once a month, we will make a meeting. Uh, it will be, we will have only one time, not three times, in addition to the world meeting we have every month. And we will go one meta competence at a the time. There is seven meta competence. Competence is to know, uh, to know what. Uh, competency is to know how, because when you know what you do it, and you know how. So it's competency. And the meta competence is when you know how to reprogram and adjust yourself when problems come or when there is change in society. So we will go one by one and we will record it. We will try to find a time which is a less disturbing for everybody. And you can attend or you can see the video. So that's uh, what we will do. Maybe actually to be more fair, we might change a little bit the time to allow every group to make it more accessible in their time zone. Another thing we are doing is uh, we are doing posts every day on LinkedIn. And any one of you who have an idea of a post, send it to us. We'll be happy. We have a staff which will be doing the graphic art and posting it. We have a group uh, to edit it. And uh, we will be able to publish it worldwide on the, uh, for you. Uh, with that said, uh, what we want you to do is to be engaged as much as you can through uh, Slack, but not necessarily in every field. You need to choose what is your priority field. So if I am sharing my screen, which should happen with the other member, because that's the way we will grow. Just a reminding, we have a, a help group on LinkedIn, uh, MSW help group. And that group on LinkedIn is helping all the members to boost up their score on uh, LinkedIn. And actually, that idea came from Lisa, who said we should do that. So we did that, and it worked very well. So please get engaged. The last word is you receive a package. Or uh, I know that one of you did not, but I will make sure that uh, uh, Rinda is, uh, is getting it. Uh, look at the icon you receive. You receive them as PDF, but they are the same as those icons. Look at your ebook, and we would like you to tell us what do you think of it? Is it useful? And how we can help you to use it in for your professional activity? And we will be more than happy to help you in that endeavor. So give us a feedback, contact us. Let us know how we can do that. Does anybody have anything to have before? Group on LinkedIn, if you could repeat that again. Yeah, uh, better than that. I will show it. It's, a, it's Mental Wellness Society Support Group. And if you send me an email, I will get you included in that. So you send me an email. Uh, you can send me your Slack. You can send me... Um, a link in note, and I will send it to you to get you included in that group. Works very well. Some people are very well engaged on it. So, thank you so much. We'll see you next month. And uh, if you have ideas how we can help you or what we should do to fulfill your wish to be in the Mental Wellness Society, tell us what you would like us to do and what you would like to see. Uh, as you can see, we are a team of people working together, and we would like you to uh, be involved. Uh, Rodrigo, you are in Chile, and we want to tell you goodbye, because we are already closing. We are five minutes over the schedule. So, Rodrigo, we wish you next, next time. We will be happy to hear about you and what you do in Chile. Thank you so much, and goodbye, everybody. Be well. Be, Bye, everybody. Be healthy and happy. Thank you so much, Gerard. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye-bye.